Hello, David Dominesi here. We're at the 12 inch pedestal grinder today, the auto start pedestal grinder. We've got a 36 wheel here and a 60 here. Grinder is a workhorse, but we have two problems. Number one, the spark arresters are gone. And I've been trying to get by without it, but I'm tired of it. So it's time to make new spark arresters for here and here. I think we'll make some on the mill. Number two, the tool rests. Cast iron. So many sparks for so long. The tool rests are being worn down here and it's no longer flat. It's dished, if you can see that. So I want to face off these tool rests. And there's a big gouge over here. It's probably been like this since 1958. It's time to bring it up to 2017. The water pot was broken, so I made it look like a spout. Almost looks like it came that way. It is connected to the floor. That's a must. Earthquake City here. Everything under the grinder is quick adjust. This is for the tool rest, banana colored handle, and this is for the grinder wheel guard, so I don't have to grab tools. That side, this side as well. The eye shields are lit and the lights work, so that's a plus. For the spark arrestor mounts, this is what I'm thinking about. That is two and three quarters by an inch and five eighths. And we'll need two of them. This is the idea here. That should be able to mount there. And then the spark arrestor will mount right here. And it'll be slotted so that the spark arrestor can move up and down. We want about a 1 8 inch clearance between the wheel and the spark arrestor. And I think this will work good for the spark arrestor. Piece of angle, looks like it's 3 inch angle. Looks like it's plenty thick, 13 64ths. I think that'll do it. That is five millimeters, two hundred and ten thousandths. That needs to be about two inches. And that will mount on here. And then it'll be able to slide up and down like that. Let's take this over to the bandsaw and cut it. You always want to keep the blade on your bandsaw untensioned while you're not using it. When it's time to use it, you tension it up. I don't have a tension gauge, so I tension it until one eye pops out. Oh, there we go. Since we'll be cutting angle iron, we have a sharp spot on the top here that could drag a tooth off of our blade. So we want to file that flat, make it safe for the blade. And we're going to square this metal off first, then we'll cut two of them to size. OK, 
Okay, that's about right for the second cut, a little bit more than two inches. We're going to want to file down that high spot. That should be good. We want to make more than one, so let's set up our tool stop, work stop here. We'll use a spacer. That's about right. Beautiful. Okay, we want this piece here, but not that piece. So let's cut this off. Stick it in there. That looks just about right. Now we have to put a piece of equal thickness on the other side of the vise so that the vise doesn't go crooked when we close it down. Make sure that's flat. Tighten it up good and go to town. will be donated to the Goodwill for the next person who wants to make a spark arrester for the 12 inch grinder. Now, we put the other one in. Beautiful cut. All right, here we are for try number two. I think we'll make it about five inches this time. We should be able to get two out of this, here and here, so we need to cut these off. We don't want to pull a tooth off of our blade on a sharp corner. We'll stack them in there together 
so that when they cut, they'll both be the same. We'll file that sharp corner off and then get started. That leaves a nice bandsaw finish. Of course we'll finish these up on the mill. I think now we've left enough room. So they're wide enough to go across the entire wheel and they're tall enough we'll probably cut them down a little but they're tall enough to allow for wheel wear as we bring them in. They'll sit right about here at first and then as the wheel wears down you just adjust them down. So we'll be slotting these. Cool deal. Most things I do I like to do twice. So we have these spark arresters done. They're about four and three quarters of an inch. Basically, it's like my dad said, measure once and cut twice. And then these will connect on here. That's my idea, like this. And then that will be able to slide up and down. We'll drill and tap that. So I've talked it over with you, and I think you had a good idea. Making this thicker here will allow me to drill and tap this for the holding bolts and that'll be better than trying to use washers and nuts. So let's leave a little bit more material there. Really won't matter if we have more or less for clearance on the grinder. No problem there. I'm glad you suggested that. Thank you. So what's left to do now is to square off and mill these blocks the same and then slot these two spark arrestor brackets if you will and we'll round them off and make them look pretty make them the same size we'll figure it out you know it's amazing how close the tolerances are on that bandsaw Look at that. Needle doesn't move even a sliver. Simply amazing. Okay, we're at the tree milling machine. Model 2 UVRC. Okay, we have to tram our vise in, so we need to hook up our Sterrett last word indicator in the spindle. So we'll have to put a collet in to hold the last word indicator rod. So I'll show you the tree quick change collet system. The first thing you do is pull the yoke out, pull the spindle down, unscrew the collet holder. The tree uses a double taper Z collet. So you put your collet in. Screw it back into the spindle, unscrew it about half a turn, one turn, put your holder in, then you keep tightening it and going over center until it clamps down good, close the yoke, you're done. To change to another tool of the same size, you would open the yoke, take it out, put another one in, and close your yoke. That's what tree is famous for. Okay, we're just about trammed in. We'll 
We'll let it fall off so you can see the pretension. Perfect. Gotta love Kurt. Okay, we need to deburr what we're using for our spark arresters. We'll use the Kalamazoo one inch sander. That ought to do it. I'll do the other one off camera. All right, now we've got this crust on this hot rolled. We gotta deal with that. We'll sand it off. That's got most of it. That'll help our end mills last longer. You can see the difference here. There's that old hot rolled crust. And there we got a lot of it off. It's really hard. And it wears down your high speed steel quickly. So it's better just to take it off with an abrasive disc. Yeehaw! When your abrasive belt gets all loaded up with grit, it's time to hit it with the abrasive belt cleaning rubber and then give it, a, give it another small shot of super brand polishing oil. Let's get that done. Nice and clean and ready to go. Okay, we got to use the fly cutter on these, get these done, slotted, ready to go. Then we'll work on our brackets. We'll see you in part two. David Dominesi, have a good day.